All right, hey everybody, Professor Klein here to bring you a video on the skull, but the colorized version of the skull and all the bones and bony landmarks that make this up. Let's begin. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit longer video. There's another video that's just going over the bones of the skull, but I wanna talk about the bones and the bony landmarks. First off, a bone would be like this entire structure right here. This is the frontal bone. But a bony landmark would be like one specific hole or bump or ridge on that bone. So for example, see this little notch right here? This is actually a hole called the supraorbital foramen. That's a bony landmark within the frontal bone. You also have the supraorbital margin, which would be like the eyebrows coming across here. It looks like a little ridge. Coming down, the nasal bone. Sometimes you don't have bony landmarks with the bone. For example, the nasal bone, this one in pink, just the nasal bone. Keeping it going though, now we're down to the maxilla. The maxilla has a bony landmark that I got the probe in right now. This is the infraorbital foramen. Notice how supra orbital foramen is above the eye or the orbit and the infra orbital foramen is below. Use that context to name these things. Then we come down here and we can see the teeth. These are the maxillary teeth going into the maxillary margin. Up here, the vomer bone in green. And when you are within the nasal cavity, nasal cavity. So the vomer plus this right here forms a wall between the right and left nostrils. Well, what is this wall? This is the nasal septum and it's a combination of the vomer bone and this bone, which is the ethmoid bone. But this part of it is specifically called the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So vomer plus the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone would equal the nasal septum. Continuing inside the nasal cavity, this bone is called the inferior nasal concha. Inferior nasal concha. You also have a middle and a superior nasal concha. Really tough to see on here, if not impossible but those would be like this picture right here. Keeping it going. We got the zygomatic bone. This is the zygomatic bone right here. And it's got a little bit of a process called the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. It is only where the probe is right now. Because over here, this in orange, would be the temporal bone. And the temporal bone has this process, which would be called the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Now, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone plus the temporal process of the zygomatic bone together all across here, like this little bridge, would form the zygomatic arch. What else we got going on here with the temporal bone? Well, you can see a couple bumps in the back here. One big, large, wide bump is called the mastoid process. This really narrow one though, it's called the styloid process. This is actually a hole that sound waves travel in called the external acoustic meatus. On the other side, pop off the skull cap and look into the temporal bone here, I can see another hole. This would be called the internal acoustic meatus. So the internal acoustic meatus and the external way down here would connect. Now what's this like ridge or mountain top here, if you would, this is called the petrous part of the temporal bone, petrous part of the temporal bone. It also shares 
this foramen. This is the jugular foramen with the brown bone, the occipital bone. The occipital bone also has a very large foramen, the biggest hole. This is called the foramen magnum. Right on the side here, you can see the hypoglossal canal, another hole. And as you come back, you can see a bump on the back of the skull. This would be called the external occipital protuberance. This bump, which you can feel on the back of your skull right here. Coming off of that are the nuchal lines. Here's a picture of the nuchal lines, as you can see a few of them on the skull. Let's freeze frame it right here, and you can see that external occipital protuberance coming down to the frame and magnum from an inferior view with the occipital condyles on either side. Those are going to articulate with cervical, cervical vertebrae, number one, the atlas. What's this bone in red? This would be the sphenoid bone, sphenoid. Remember, orange, temporal, brown, occipital, red, sphenoid, and down in yellow, the maxilla. So this is like the inside of the mouth that you're looking at. Inside of the nose would be up here. Green would be the vomer. Red is the sphenoid right here. What's this purple one? This is the palatine bone, palatine bone. Not to be confused with these bony landmarks. These two on either side where the probe is are the medial pterygoid processes. Medial pterygoid processes. And over here where the probe is now, you have the lateral pterygoid process, lateral pterygoid process. Zoom out from there. I want to stay on the sphenoid bone so you can see it from all sides. There it is in red there. There it is in red deep in the orbit of the eye. Be careful. Not sure why, but this model has another red bone and it's the lacrimal bone. Lacrimal. Right on the surface is the lacrimal fossa, this smooth area, but this is the lacrimal bone on either side. Not to be confused with sphenoid which is also red deep in there. Now there's a white bone called the ethmoid bone. And remember the ethmoid bone includes this perpendicular plate right here. So it's deep within the skull. The sphenoid bone also has some holes. This one on top is called the superior orbital fissure. And there's another fissure on the bottom called the inferior orbital fissure. Can't see that one as well, but you can see that oval shaped one on the top. And there also is a hole right in here. Let's go deep in there and refocus. That is called the optic canal. Swing it around. To this view and I like switching up views it's really important to be able to see the skull from all different views we can see in blue the frontal bone in black I actually labeled this in for you is the ethmoid bone with see this thing in the middle this is called the Christogoli let me swing it to the side a little bit more for you See how that's coming up in the middle? It's like a dividing line between the right and left sides. That's called the Crista Galli. On either side is the cribriform plate. The cribriform plate actually has holes in it called the olfactory foramina, but you can't really see those holes in this model. So that's ethmoid. Zoom out to sphenoid. And sphenoid, you've got these ridges here called the lesser wings. They kind of look like wings. And then down in here would be the greater wings of a sphenoid bone, greater wing of the sphenoid bone. What's this middle part? Kind of looks like a saddle, if you will. See this little wall and then it dips down and then it comes back up. That's called 
the cella tertica. The whole thing is the cella tertica. Posterior wall, anterior wall, and the floor, cella tertica. However, just the floor of it is nice and smooth. That's called the hypophyseal fossa, where the hypophyseal gland or pituitary gland sits. All right, what are some refrainment that you can see in here? Well, this is where the optic canal would be. This is actually a hole. Over here, we have the foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, and foramen lacerum. R O S. Ross for those three. And I remember foramen lacerum right here. Now, remember that one of the main functions of the skull is to hold and protect the brain. So the brain kind of sits like this. Well, if you break the brain down into an anterior part, a middle part, and a posterior part, those parts would sit on three main areas. This would be the anterior cranial fossa, this would be the middle cranial fossa, and the posterior cranial fossa. Now here's a good picture of it. And really what I'm pointing at are multiple bones that make a, a floor, if you will, or a landing pad for the brain to sit. So here's a good picture of that. Back to an anterior lateral view here. And we gotta come down to the mandible. The mandible is a huge bone, the jaw bone. And it's got a couple main features. Well, in front, we got the body, the body of the mandible. Over here, we've got what's called a ramus. And this little angle here is called the mandibular angle. Up here, you'll notice a notch with two bumps on either side. This notch is called the mandibular notch. All right, then you look here and you can see two bumps. See the more anterior bump? That's the coronoid process, coronoid process, versus the bump back here is the condyloid process, condyloid process. That one actually has a head and a neck to it, making the temporal mandibular joint, which is the joint between the temporal bone and the mandible bone. All right, and that's just about everything for the bones and the bony landmarks of the colored skull. Thanks for watching.